Week number one. This yes. is the simplest change that anyone can make to your breakfast that will give you amazing energy. So yeah. tell us what this change is. Well, it's and why it simple, makes a yep. but it's not necessarily easy. Mm. Okay, so the okay, you've heard breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I want to change that sentence. I want to change it to breakfast is the most powerful meal of the day. If for breakfast you have a big glucose spike, so if you have lots of starches and sugars, for example, a fruit juice and some granola, or some bread and some jam, or some cereal or a fruit smoothie, that's going to create a massive glucose spike. And then that breakfast glucose spike is going to kick off a roller coaster for the rest of the day, a roller coaster of cravings and fatigue. And it's midnight and you've had 25 cookies and you're like, how did this happen? Look at your breakfast. So in week one of the method, what we do is we switch from a sweet breakfast to a savory breakfast built around protein. This is the most life-changing thing you will ever do. <laughs> no, seriously, it will completely transform your glucose levels, completely transform your days. So savory breakfast has a good amount of protein in it, a little bit of fat, a little bit of starches if you want, like for taste, you can add some bread or potatoes, it's not an issue. But importantly, a savory breakfast contains nothing sweet, except if you want some whole fruit for taste, again. So we're talking having omelets for breakfast. We're talking having leftovers from dinner for breakfast. That's a super easy thing to do. We're talking having a smoked salmon toast. We're talking about, you can make some granola if it's like nut centric and doesn't have too much sugar in it. You have to rethink your breakfast and this will radically change your day. I did that. I wasn't usually like sweet tooth is not typically my thing. Usually only during like hormonal times. So I'm like, oh, I'm PMSing, I, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the amount of savory, easy breakfast. And by the way, did you know I'm a member of your recipe club too? Oh, yes, girl. Oh, oh come on. I was like, give it all. Give me those recipes. Yes. It, you have so many options that are so easy and so healthful. And like you said, there's not 17,000 ingredients, mm -mm. six or less five minutes, done and done. And it's so good. You can make also one of my favorite right now is the egg cups. Yes. So you can make these in advance and make six egg, cu egg cups. You can, you know, cook them on a Sunday. It doesn't take very long, like 25 minutes. And then you have your whole week of savory breakfasts yep. planned and accounted for. So I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for people because I know it's complicated to face, you know, changes, but this is Seriously, so simple. And during the method, by the way, you just do the four hacks and the rest of the time you eat whatever you want. There's no restrictions. Nothing is off limits. I promise you, as you add these hacks, your body will naturally stop craving all of the junk food that you felt addicted to. And so naturally, you're going to be like, I don't need that chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. I don't need to eat that burger. I'm actually fine. Yes. Week number two. So this one is the secret ingredient that allows you to eat dessert and still go into fat burning mode. What is it? Mm, it is vinegar. <laughs> and so vinegar, when I first saw the scientific studies, I was a bit shocked. I was like, wow, this is crazy that nobody's talking about this. So one tablespoon of vinegar in a tall glass of water, make sure you dilute it before a meal, can cut the glucose spike of your meal by up to 30%. It's incredible. Without you needing to change anything about what you're eating. You just add the vinegar before the meal of your day that's going to be the highest in carbs, for example, and you still enjoy your meal but with less impact on your body thanks to the vinegar. So in the method, in week two, we add one vinegar drink a day. And it can be super simple. It can just be the vinegar tablespoon in water. But if you're a bit squeamish, I have lots of delicious teas and mocktails. You can also make a salad dressing. That also works. And any type of vinegar works, except avoid the very syrupy, aged yes. Italian balsamic. Sadly, but yes. Because <laughs> that one has a bit more sugar in it. Super simple. Tremendous impact, especially if you're somebody who suffers from post-meal cravings. Yeah. This is going to nip them in the bud. Can I tell you how many bottles of apple cider vinegar <laughs> I've purchased since I got your book? I am like apple cider vinegar on lock. Oh and my I, gosh. The way that I do it, I just do it first thing in the morning mm. and then you're going to laugh at me. So we were um, we were upstate up and about and you remember there's one time where I knew we were going to like kind of cruise past, which we'll talk about. I was like, I know tonight, like after my dinner, after I have all my fiber, all my veggies, all my fat, all my protein, 
I'm going to have dessert because yeah. there's one particular place. And I was looking around. I was like, you know what I'm going to need? Like, mama's going to need a flask. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Because it's just like, it, it was such a beautiful thing to discover the science. And I like the taste of apple cider. Like, mm-hmm. I don't find it, you know, diluted in water. It doesn't affect me. I, I actually enjoy it. I look forward to it now. Mm. But I was like, you know, I'm going to be carrying out a flask. Be like, does Marie Forleo just drink in her face? I'm be like, dude, it's apple cider <laughs> have a cupcake or that uh, brownie and I'm just going to take care of my body. I love it. And yeah. that's, I like that sentence, taking care of your body. It's like, yes. you have to have a conversation. You're like, hey body. Yeah, I know. I'm talking a lot about chocolate because I love chocolate. Yeah, I know this double chocolate fudge cupcake is not going to be like good for you, but don't worry. I'm going to help you a little bit by having this vinegar drink before. Yeah. And, and so like, it's a partnership. It is a partnership. Yeah. And like, I'm going to have some broccoli before. That was the other thing that I want to make note of here that I thought was so instructive and that has changed my life. You know, the notion, I love going on vacation or adventures with Josh. You know, yeah. I work a lot and I love my work, but I also love traveling and yeah. being out in the world. And sometimes we find ourselves in beautiful places. Like earlier this year, we were in Portugal. Oh, nice. And they have um, this kind of beautiful egg custard. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're walking around and it's been hours. And it, in the past, I would have been like, oh, you know, it's two or three o'clock. I can have one of those. It's early enough in the day. I'm going to keep walking and burn it off, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm like, oh, well, I can go have a salad and some broccoli and then have that great little treat. Yes. So the notion that you teach in, in your work of like, if you're going to have a sweet, have it as dessert. Yes. Because that way you get all the pleasure, yes. all the dopamine in your brain, yes. which is what some people might confuse for energy, but it's actually just pleasure from the sugar with less impact on your health. That's right. And so the key thing is avoid having sugar on an empty stomach. That means avoid sugar first thing in the morning, avoid sugar as a snack. If you want to eat that delicious dessert or that delicious sweet thing, have it as dessert after a meal. Yes. Instead of breakfast or snack. This is so important because otherwise you're going to kick off that roller coaster. And two hours later, you're going to be like, oh, I want something else that's sweet yes. and something else and something else. And you become a victim to this roller coaster. Totally. But that, that was big for me. And I, I really loved it. Okay. Week three, mm-hmm. um, this was another fun one. And again, and every week you have all of these gorgeous recipes. So tell us what we're doing in week three. So week three, we're applying the science we just talked about a little bit earlier about having the veggies first. So week three, we add one veggie starter to one meal a day. Now, ideally your veggie starter composes about, makes up about 30% of your meal, but don't worry if you can't get to that because it's maybe a lot of adaptation. Even just two cherry tomatoes, one baby carrot is a step in the right direction of getting that fiber at the beginning of a meal. So it's gradual, build up to it to have lots of easy recipes. Think about your favorite vegetable, try to mix them in advance and then have that as a veggie starter before a meal. And what you can do is also mix the vinegar hack with the veggie starter hack. So you do veggie starter with a vinegar dressing and you are protected for that meal. Your glucose is going to stay nice and steady and you can still eat what you love while also helping your body, helping alleviate those symptoms. Yes. So again, it's positive and you're actually going to end up eating more than usual, Mm -hmm. which is surprising because you might think that's a bad thing. Oh, more, more food, more calories. I'm going to put on weight. Actually, you won't because those calories and that food you're adding, they're good foods to be adding. They're going to keep your cravings at bay, reduce hunger, increase fat burning modes. So you're not going to be hungry on this method. You're going to be super full and satiated and very happy. I found that too. I found that as I was going through the four weeks and now it just is all so automatic because it is so simple that I found myself just naturally even noticing my satiation levels, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm satisfied. Like I'm fully satisfied rather than kind of plowing through or, you know, some of uh, like old habits in the past. It was That's so beautiful because you feel reconnected with your body. Really reconnected. And that's really the goal. Yes. To try to come back to this partnership and yep. feeling like you're friends with your body instead of feeling like it's a black box you don't understand and having all these emotions of blame and guilt and shame. It's not very hard to get back to a place where you feel grateful and you feel connected and you feel love. Yes. That's what this four-week method helps you get to. And it makes me so happy to hear you say that as well. Oh, yeah. And it also, I love, I want to underscore this notion of being friends with our body because I think for so many of us, we felt like to a certain degree, it's our enemy. 
yes. to a certain degree, like we're battling with it. Like, why can't my body behave this way? Why is it doing this to me? Why are these chemicals happening? I can't control it. That's out. And it just, to me, like I have this image of like this horrible wrestling match that quite honestly, in my mind, it's like the energy is violent. Yeah. You know, the energy is angry. The energy is really fierce. The energy um, is destructive. When actually your body's just trying to keep you alive? Yes. Like truly your body is not against you. Your, your body purpose is to keep you alive there's yes. no there's no ulterior motive here yes your body is not an enemy not a villain but because of the disconnection we have it can feel like that it can feel like a relationship of nemesis yes because you're so out of touch you're so disconnected so getting back to the connection is so beautiful and also what is brilliant about this is like this isn't based on just theory. Mm. All of this is rooted in science. Yeah. And so it's like, not only does this work and you can feel it and experience it for yourself, but in all of your work, you quote all the studies. For sure. Well, you know, at the core, I'm a biochemist. And when yep. I got interested in the world of glucose, when I saw, you know, those days where my glucose was steadier, I felt better. I dove into all the research. I read as many scientific papers as I could on the topic. And I thought, wow, the information here is so powerful. It needs to be communicated. So I'm not inventing any of this. My work has been truly to just take the discoveries made by all these incredible scientists across the world and turn it into something applicable. So you'll find in my work, you know, hundreds of scientific references if you want to learn more. And I'm always keeping up to date with the latest studies coming out. And I, I love doing that because this science deserves to be in the spotlight. It deserves to be recognized. It deserves to be used and applied. It's the power of having the right messenger. It's actually, it is the reason I was thinking about this because um, I have some new things that we're creating and working on. And I was thinking back to when I started over 22 years ago. And I, even though it's a different field, I remember just learning about these ideas and these practices and these concepts that were around personal development or even around business. And I remember just going like, why don't more people know about this? Like, why was I not taught this, you know, in grammar school or whatever? And that same notion was really the driving force to why I even wanted to create this business because mm -hmm. I felt like maybe because I love communication and I love making things beautiful and I love making things simple and actionable that I could play a part in helping great ideas get out to a wider audience of people that they weren't reaching for whatever reason. Okay. A hundred percent. And you're doing a great job at it. And we need more people doing this work yes. of taking the science and the theory yep. and turning it into something you can apply. Yep. Week four. This okay. was, so, oh my gosh, I've had so much fun with this one. <laughs> so much fun with this one. Tell us what we're doing. Okay. So we, by the, by the time you hit, you hit week four, you're doing savory breakfast, vinegar, and veggie starter. So you're feeling pretty good. And now we add the final, the final hack that's going to really change the game. So we recruit powerful allies, our muscles. Let me explain. So your muscles, when they contract, they need energy. And the first place they look for energy is in your bloodstream. They look for glucose molecules to use and burn so they can contract. In week four, what we do is after one meal a day, we use our muscles for 10 minutes. This allows your body to use some of the glucose from the meal you just had to contract, to move, and then reduce the glucose spike very easily. So 10 minutes can mean going for a 10-minute walk after lunch. It can mean cleaning your home. <laughs> which I need to do more of. It can mean doing the laundry. It can mean dancing in your living room. It can mean, of course, going for a run, going to the gym, doing whatever you want. It can mean doing some calf push-ups, calf raises at your desk at work. It can mean whatever you want. But this is very, very important to get your body moving and using some of that glucose to reduce the spike. Every, once I learned this, it has been, I, I think it's been like one or two times that I've missed. Oh, wow. And um, what we did, we had um, friends over our place upstate and we have kind of an area where there's like a bunch of weights and yoga mats, you mm. know, and all kinds of stuff. I was like, guys, we're going over to the bungalow and I have my like Apple watch. I'm like, 10 minutes. Yes. And I, so I was... Um, I used to be a Nike elite dance athlete and I taught a lot of fitness. So I'm like leading them through. I I'm love like, it. it was so hilarious. Like all of us. And here in the city, we're taking walks, taking the dog out. And I've like, I know it's only, and which is great in this, and we'll start to talk into how you do what you do. Cause I want to get into the business of being the glucose goddess, which is so exciting to me. <laughs> but, um, so it's only, you only have to do it one meal. Yeah. I'm going for all the meals because it's so fun. And then it becomes like, oh, that's an extra 30-minute yeah. workout. I'm yeah. dancing around the house. I'm doing leg lifts. I'm doing butt lifts. <laughs> I, you know, I'm doing all the things. I love it. And it's just 
It's so great. Mm. It's so, so great. I'm, I'm loving this. You're such a good glucose goddess. Good I, job, girl. 